Okay, feature artist time. Yes. Now, we don't like to be biased or anything <laughs> when it comes to these artists that we, we uh, call our feature artists every week. We try to go out of our way to not be biased, actually. We do make a point of this, just so you were all aware of it. But right now, I'm going to make no bones about the fact <laughs> that we both absolutely love the Deep End. We've seen them countless times now, too. We love their music. Yep. We love the guys. They're a lot of fun to hang around with. They're a lot yep. of fun to, to watch play. And um, they never fail to impress in anything they do. Yeah, they're, they're definitely well and truly worthy of being our feature artists this week. And they are just well and truly worthy of going on to great big heights in the in their career. Yeah. We did mention them briefly last season, but it wasn't a feature. And this time around, we've gone bang straight into it. So that's why we're devoting this time to these guys, because they are worthy of it. Yep. Now, uh, they formed in 2007. Yep thereabouts yep. and they've done three EPs the first EP was Lights Out yep we haven't heard that one no we've heard the songs off it yep but uh, we don't actually have a copy of it no but um, second EP can't say no yes fantastic and you can't say no to this one no you can't <laughs> you wouldn't want to no hook you in straight away <laughs> And, um, I mean, off the back of this EP, they've got gigs with yeah. Airborne, The Angels, um, Rose Tattoo. Yep. They're, they're just killing it. They're, they're going to go places. They're going to go reach heights that so many bands in Melbourne Aspire probably to. deserve to yeah. reach. But the Deep End are going to get there. And they're probably one of the first ones to get there out of the scene that's building at the moment. Yeah, totally. Yep. Now, um, this one was the first one that we heard by the deep end. Yeah, that was our first taste of them. Loved it. Yeah. Got sucked in by it. <laughs> Big time. Got a favourite track off it? Yeah, I've uh, I've gone and picked off of that one, Don't Rip Me Off. I have to look for that one. But yeah, that's the one I like. And it's got a really good bluesy sort of a vibe to it, really good balls out hard rock. This stuff is just right up the, the same vein as sort of the ACDCs and Airborns yeah, and all that stuff with their own spin on it. It's got a bit of a Guns N' Roses in it as well. It's got a bit of everything that's just good classic hard rock. And the live versus the CD recording is there's no difference in it. It just goes from strength to strength. It's just all balls out. You've got no complaints with this at all. My favourite off, off the first EP that we had. Yep. Can't say no. Would have to be Take Your Shot Girl. Yep. I really, really enjoy that song. I enjoy that song even more live. Yep. But um, like you were saying, if you take everything that Guns N' Roses did that was kind of dangerous on Appetite for yeah. Destruction yep. and then smashed it together with the pub rock Aussie vibe yep. of Rose Tattoo of the Angels and, and what Airborne have been doing yep. more recently, yep. that's when you end up with the deep end. And that's... Just an awesome combination in my mind. and It works. It really, really works. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you watch these guys on stage and you've got the bass player that plays while he's hopping on one leg with the yeah. bass under his other leg. You've yeah. got um, guitarists spinning in circles. You don't know whether someone's going to get collected with a headstock or... I don't know how they haven't actually managed to clean each other up yet on stage in the times oh. that we've seen them. They they have that much energy. They leave nothing in the tank, period. If you see them for half an hour or an hour, they leave nothing. It's it's all on stage, and they're dripping when they get off. Man. Oh, yeah. and nah, The energy that they put in is, is just unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, they're young, and they've got that energy to spare. <laughs> Unlike some of us, <laughs> I've, I've stood there and I've watched bands that have played before them or that are about to play after them, and they just shake their hand, their, their heads, and they they think, "How in the hell are we going to follow that?" Or, or, "How in the hell did we have a hope of opening for them?" And yeah, that, and that's the deep end in a nutshell. They just they just blow you away. And yeah. they're getting a reputation for this, and the reputation is very well deserved. Totally. Yeah. Now. Um, the second EP came along late last year, yep. uh, about November, and yeah, it was November, and yep. we actually went along to the launch gig, and and then um, we called it, we put it up there in our top 10 yeah. gigs of the year, and that was including international gigs, Yep. and I think it actually came in at about number three. Yeah, it was that, way up there. That gig was just phenomenal. Yep. So I highly recommend that any time you get a chance to go and see the Deep End, go and see them. Now, um, the EP that we're talking about that they launched in November is Your Shout. 
another fantastic CD. This one's only got four tracks on it. Yep. But um, so much more development in this EP, though. It's only four tracks, but it shows you how much growth they've gone through in their leaps time. Leaps and bounds. Yeah. Especially on on my particular yep. favorite track of the of the record, which is just waiting. Yep. I absolutely love that track, and it's something that us and a lot of other um, a lot of bands around Melbourne and Australia in particular can relate to because it's sort of about waiting for your time to arrive yeah. literally it's just sick of being yeah. stuck in a dead end day job yeah you're waiting for your time to arrive and yeah. we can all relate to that so that's that's actually my particular favorite song on if you track, can't I'm relate playing. to that get off the doll <laughs> <laughs> or the gear yeah pretty much my favorite for this one was dtf now i'm not going to explain the meaning of that if you can't work it out by now well then i don't know why you're watching this show <laughs> but um I love that track, and again, it's one of those tracks that shows more growth, and it, I don't know, I, I can't say enough good words about these guys, they're fantastic blokes to hang around with and talk to, and, and they've got nothing but good time yeah, totally. for anyone to have, and, and they're fantastic, and they, like I said, they, they leave everything on stage, they leave nothing behind. You Such hard workers as well, yeah. they, they'll drive to Queensland for the weekend just to do a show, Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, phenomenal. But uh, let's have a look at an interview that we did with the boys. Yep. A highly entertaining interview. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, we sat down with them in this very room and... Had take, a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, take a look. All right, we're here with Dale and Scotty from The Deep End. How, how you doing? doing? Good, mate. How are you? Not bad. So um, tell us a bit about the band. Where'd you get your start? Um, well, yeah, I'm probably the best at this because I was the longest, so... Longest serving member, veteran. The best in the band. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, um, probably about four years ago we um got together at my house. And four we... years ago, where have the other two years gone? Six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Good start. Good start. Well, I can't count. All right. <laughs> Six years ago we got together and um yeah we just wanted to play rock songs and we thought the best way of doing it was our own way and yeah we sort of recruited Dale couple months in didn't we and then we sort of went through a few members and here we are today in your bedroom <laughs> having a good chat <laughs> you've given it away you've given it away now we're not in his bedroom just don't look at the cameras the other way like don't face him that way because in that closet over we're there. not in his bedroom <laughs> there's all these chains and shackles and stuff but yeah no that's basically how the band started and that's yeah you know, i don't know that's just how it is and we haven't changed and more or less started off as like an idea just to play covers and have fun and stuff like that and then just sort of evolved. We played our first gig um, at like a town hall and I think we only did two of it. We only had two original songs by that stage and that was obviously absolute rubbish then and the rest of the set was just covers and we loved it that much that we decided that this is what we have to do now. Like we have to keep writing more songs of our own and take it further and further. So um, tell us a bit about your most recent release. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, we did it at the Basin Studio with uh, Matt Darcy, and it's just four tracks, one cover, three of our own, and our best work yet, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It's just hard rock and it was um, a few ways. We sort of had a bit of an idea that we wanted to use, uh, well, we wanted to record something that we could use to promote the band, and um, we sort of did a bit of shopping around, and we ended up going with Matt Darcy. Um, just because we'd heard some stuff that he'd done and he sort of worked with us, um, not just for us. And so we really liked the idea of having sort of like a six member in, in the band at the time that we could record. So everything was collaborated together and he was straight up about everything. Like he was the first to tell us if he didn't like something or if something needed to be better. So we were all about achieving a bigger goal whilst we were even just in the studio. Like we went in there thinking that we were ready and within the first uh, couple of hours of starting that recording process, he's already saying, nah, try this, nah, try yeah. that. And at first, we sort of were set back by it, but we wouldn't want it to be any other way now because he actually brought out a lot more in us than we actually thought we could in that process. He almost like, we saw the songs a certain way and he saw where they could go, I suppose, mm -hmm. and we sort of met in between or... Yeah, well, that's and they it. just grew, and they're just a better product, just from his advice and his ideas. It's just a different way of looking at it compared to what we were blinded by. If that yeah, sort of makes sense. Play one song so many times, and you're so used to it that you 
forget what else could be happening. Yeah. yeah. So, um, neither of you mentioned what the name of the EP actually was. I can't Just remember for anybody it. Anybody that doesn't know it, pretty good at promoting. <laughs> really good at promoting. It's called your shout. Is it? By the way, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did forget. <laughs> I was about to say A Grade Warren, but that is, um, that's a great song, by the way. But <laughs> I, I, I could tell you everything about it if you want. Um, it's called Your Shout. Um, yeah, it was released on 25th of November, 2011, at the ESPY. So I knew that much. Should. August. We were all there. <laughs> we were all there. We were all there that night. But yeah, it's on, um, it's on iTunes and stuff, so yeah, get amongst it. Awesome. Now, um, what was... The decision to put a cover on on a four track EP all about. Um, That's the hardest decision. <laughs> it was it was a weird one, definitely. And like, I guess where even though a lot of people sort of see the band as playing in a genre that's been done before, and you get all these people that are kind of negative about it, sort of saying, "Oh, you know, you're never going to do this, or you're never going to make it, or blah blah blah," because you know, ACDC's done it and fucking rah rah. rah. Um, to go with something that someone else has already done again, we wouldn't just do a cover for the sake of covering a song exactly the same way it was done. And then that's where What's Up came into it. Yeah. I remember Scotty came into rehearsal and he goes, guys, fucking completely random idea, but why don't we do a cover of Four Non Blondes' What's Up? It was like, no, no, not, what, what, we're not four lesbians. Or, I, mean, I think there's only one or two lesbians in the band, but... Just means they like what we like, but still. Yeah, I think there's a dude in there as well. Is there a dude in there? Okay, sure. <laughs> um, He's not a lesbian. So, yeah, it was really sort of left field, but then we started playing it and we wrote it again the way that we wanted to play it. And when it came to picking the songs that we wanted on the EP, we just couldn't go past it because we, f- we really thought that it was something that we'd done so differently that people could appreciate our take on it. Yeah. So, yeah, that was kind of our decision to go with that. And there's a little bit of a lyric change at the, the very beginning of it as well. Good pickup. Yeah. Someone's done their homework. How, did, how does, does that come into play? Yeah. Um, it's it actually didn't, Matt Darcy's idea. You didn't want to sing The Brotherhood of Man. That's No, I, I don't really give two fucks about The Brotherhood of Man. <laughs> so, Matt Darcy, and he sort of said, look, you're not a big lesbian, Dale. I said, I try to be, you're but like I'm women. not. You're like women. But... Um, and he said, why don't you change the lyrics to brotherhood of bands because essentially you guys are all working to achieve one common goal and you know you're all struggling to do it at times and then you're all having great moments so why don't you change it to brotherhood of bands cool idea yeah i really like that idea because there is there is a bit of a brotherhood of bands going on in amongst the, the melbourne scene particularly yeah. at the moment sure. yeah. so um who would you consider to be part of the the brotherhood of the deep end bands you know Dead City Ruins, for sure. Yeah, Dead City Ruins. Um, Fast Track were when they were around. They were definitely... Definitely. In a way, like Electric Dynamite. Um, you got bands like Overdrive as well. Um, Dead Star Renegade. Yeah, for sure. Destroy She Said. Um, My Dynamite. Shit, Rock so City Riff Rack when they were around, yeah. yeah. There's, there's just so many great bands in Melbourne. At the yeah, moment. and it seems like, I don't know, like, every, every time you sort of looking to see who else is doing something in Melbourne. Like, you see this new Melbourne band pop up. A lot of them aren't even originally from Melbourne. There's a lot of bands moving from yep. the yeah. rest of Australia to come here. Like, they see the opportunity that Melbourne's presenting. And I guess we're really blessed in Melbourne to have so many venues that we can play at. Like, I know a lot of us complain about it, and obviously we wish there was more. We wish that half the places that we played were rock nights or metal nights or even just live music every night but a lot of them want to be DJs and stuff, but still, we're pretty lucky what we've got. Yeah, we've sort of got the best, don't we? Yeah, in Australia, yeah, definitely. Definitely. 